Oh, I can do as a student. <clears throat> yeah, there you go. All right, away you go. Okay, everyone loves to hear a good story. So here we go, writing a good narrative, which is the same for a speech or a short story or um, a presentation like we're doing here. Uh, whether it's in writing or spoken, doesn't matter. I'm going to use a couple of examples in this to give you an indication of what a good story is and how to put one in together yourself. So our narrative structure begins with our orientation, which is the buzzword. We have to have certain buzzwords that people like to use in English. So it sets the scene. It creates a visual picture of the setting, the atmosphere, and the time of the story. The characters are introduced and clues are set in place for the coming complication. So who are all these people? We're gonna use some of these in our story. Elements of a good orientation, a vivid description, rhetorical question. Rhetorical means an argument or a particular question that's got an answer built into it. So would you like to hear a good story? That's a rhetorical question, so here we go. <laughs> and we then have a problem to be solved. This is in order to create a sense of imagery that appeals to the imagination. Sound is onomatopoeia. Uh, for, you'll use this type of language, whether it's uh, in English literature or in storytelling. Uh, sight, sound, touch, feel, or smell. So we show in a story, we don't just tell us about it. We actually use images and we use action. So. Adjectives and verbs. Adjectives are things of description of things and the verbs are the action where we can use our imagination to enter into the story. Examples of an orientation. I'm gonna to read to you now. You can read along in your mind or out loud. There was a desert wind blowing that night. It was one of those hot, dry winds that comes down through the mountain passes and curl your hair and make your nerves jump and your skin itch. On nights like that, every booze party ends in a fight. Meek little wives feel the edge of the carving knife and study their husband's necks. Anything can happen. So in this story, we have the elements of the orientation are a vivid description of the night appealing to the senses. In blue, you can see that there. And then we have in green, I'm not gonna read it all back to you, but the green part is the thing, the adjectives of how things happen. So we have our, our nerves jumping and our skin itching. It describes what's going on. And then we've got a suggestion of a problem. A problem is the complication. So the meek little wives feel the edge of the carving knife and study their husband's necks. So that gives us a foreshadowing of a future crime that's going to happen. In this orientation, the writer is focused on the setting, creating a feeling of danger. And they're keeping the audience in mind. Obviously, this would be for a more mature audience, we don't go into a Hindi class talking about using carving knives on husband's necks. Our next short orientation. Grace Hobden cleared away the lunch, checked to make sure her three children were playing on the climbing frame at the bottom of the garden, then went indoors to murder her husband. Mr. Hobden, a large blubbery whale of a man sleeping off the effects of a boozy lunch, in the corner of the room, a black and white film chattered away on the TV. Grace Hobden picked up a filleting knife from the rack in her kitchen, went into the living room and without hesitating for a moment, plunged the blade into the soft mound of her husband's chest. Okay, we're not gonna discuss the merits or the down points of the story, it just is. So we are gonna look at what the reader would expect in a story and this one covers all those things of an orientation. Grace Hobden, this one is obviously more about the person, her three children, what happens, the murder of her husband, where in a house, when in the afternoon after lunch. So we've got the five elements of a story there. 
the who, what, where, why, when. They're your friends. Sometimes we have the how. Okay? Yep. I'm going to move on. Um, we're going to give you a task now. I'm going to read you a short story and you're going to fill in the blanks. This is a short story from a well-known author called Roald Dahl. If you haven't heard of him, he wrote uh, James and the Giant Peach. He's written um, a number of stories, Tales of the Unexpected. They're more adult stories. The children's stories he's very well known for, uh, Twits, which is a series of poems. Uh, other stories off the top of my head, uh, Be Big Friendly Giant, BFG, The Witches, other stories like that you probably heard in your childhood. Yeah, so absolutely. One of my favourites. My four friends and I had come across a loose floorboard at the back of the classroom, and when we prized it up with the blade of a pocket knife, we discovered a big hollow place underneath. This, we decided, would be our secret hiding place for sweets and other small treasures, such as conkers and monkey nuts and bird's eggs. Every afternoon, when the last lesson was over, the five of us would wait until the classroom had emptied. Then we'd lift up the floorboard and examine our secret hoard, perhaps adding to it or taking something away. So what comes next? That's the, that's the setting of the story. It's a series of stories, actually, this book called Boy, because it's an epic, which is a number of short stories all put together. So we have a complication. The definition, I want you to think of a definition for your, your complication, if you remember. And then what are the boys going to find? What's the mystery? So our complication is what I put there would be the boys have these sweets and the complication is going to be something's going to happen to the sweets or something's going to happen to the floorboards. They're going to get caught. So already we've got the boys carrying on in a way that could lead to some trouble. So we're going to find out what's next. What do you think is going to happen? One day, when we lifted it up, we found a dead mouse lying among our treasures. It was an exciting discovery. Thraits took it out by the tail and waved it in front of our faces. What shall we do with it? He cried. It stinks, someone shouted. Throw it out the window quick. Hold on a tick, I said, don't throw it away. Thwaites hesitated. They all looked at me. Then, writing about oneself, one must strive to be truthful. Truth is more important than modesty. I must tell you, therefore, that is why I and I alone, who had the idea for the great and daring mouse plot. We all have our moments of brilliance and glory, and this was mine. Why don't we, I said, slip it into one of Miss Pratchett's jars of sweets? <laughs> <laughs> so what are the complications there? I think there's two. So take your time to write them down and you're going to hand this back to me so that you understand what the complication is. We'll move on to the next one. A series of events. What's the definition of a series of events in your own words? My definition is the actual difficulties or challenges the characters face. Usually it's set in place by the complication. As we know, the boys have found something in their stash of lollies at the back of the classroom that's going to lead to a lot of trouble. Let's see. Oop. We were strutting about behind the counter. Her small malignant pig eyes watched us suspiciously as we came forward. One sherbet sucker, please, Thwaites said to her, holding out his penny. I kept to the rear of the group, and when I saw Miss Pratchett turn her head away from the couple for a couple of seconds to fish a sherbet sucker out of the box, I lifted the heavy glass lid of the gobstopper jar and dropped the mouse in. Then I replaced the lid as silently as possible. My heart was thumping like mad, and my hands had gone all sweaty. And one Bootlace, please, I heard Thwaite saying. When I turned around, I saw Miss Pratchett holding out the bootlace in her filthy fingers. I don't want all the lot of you trooping in here and only one of you is buying, she screamed at us. Now get out, go on, get out. So what's the climax of this story? 
you're going to put it in your own words, but I think it was where the boys put the mouse in. That's the highlight of the story. And the suspense is built up. The ending or resolution, the coda. If there is a message behind the story, not just entertainment, it's called a coda. It could be a message behind the story. We're going to find out more about that. As soon as we were outside, we broke into a run. Did you do it? They shouted at me. Of course I did. Well done, they cried. What a super show. I felt like a hero. I was a hero. It was so marvellous to be popular. So what's the resolution? In your own words, the resolution is that the boys got away from Mrs Pratchett. And is there a mean, is there a coda? If you're going to be a hero, then do something that's a challenge. There's obviously more to this story. If you want to know what happens, you would have to read more. And it's a very thrilling story. What happens to Thwaites and young Dahl when they get found out? There's a clue in that book at the bottom left story there where it says boy tales of, tales of childhood so what do you think might happen this could be a prediction activity to keep you reading so my references for this would be the Roald Dahl book and there's a TEDx excellent checklist of how to write a great speech now why might we talk about it being a great speech well Speeches are often just like short stories in that they tell you something interesting, highly interesting, would appeal to a large audience. And anything to do with someone's childhood that was a, a, a marker or a big turning point in their life would be worthy of a, text, a TEDx talk. And you could do one. So I'm going to send a TEDx checklist to you to prepare to tell a story or to write a story. It's all the same. All that writing is, is a permanent record of a spoken language. So writing should be easy to read. As you noticed, the book by Roald Dahl was quite entertaining and quite thrilling and makes you want to read more. So that's what I'd like to think that you're going to do. And part of my program is that you're going to be learning and looking at a number of different stories that will stick in your memory because they're highly interesting and then you're going to write some yourself. Does that sound good? Good on you. Thanks. And that's it. Terrific. Yeah, that, that's, that's actually really, really good. Um, I do a lot of writing myself and I... Oh, you do? Yeah, I do. I do actually. Um, I like uh, freelance journalism type stuff at, at kind of dovetails with the content marketing um but no and I'd, I'd pay money for that because because as a writer whether you are doing a journalistic piece or whatnot you or what, whatever it may be fiction or not awesome. you you do want to become better at being able to tell a story and so just in that short little bit i will say that that is high value content so um you absolutely definitely tick a box there um, the other thing is the reference and resources. Very good. Um, people are looking for, for that as, as well in an online course or um, video course. And the other thing is um, your delivery. Your delivery was um, faultless. So oh, one, of the, one of the problems when you're doing video courses and particularly at the, at the very beginning of it is that um, it can be a bit stop start. You might, you know, have your slides in front of you and you're running through something and you're doing a screen share of your, your desktop like you did, or you're recording your desktop. If you've got the Mavavi software, I mentioned Mavavi because it is, yeah. it's the cheapest way to get going. There's a lot out okay. there. There's, there's a software like Camtasia does the same thing, has a tiny, a bit more bells and whistles, but it is like four hundred dollars. Mm. There's Adobe Premiere you could use. Huge learning curve, as with 
every other Adobe product, but it is, it's very good as well. Um, so, you know, whether you're doing, using any of those sorts of software, I have found that if you can get going with something and keep the momentum and have a faultless delivery, you are going to save yourself a ton of time. Yeah. That's, that's the major you, reason I wanted you to- You mean do it in one take? Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And, and you can do that. Uh, the, the other good thing is um, because it's video and it's not like having the presence of being in a classroom um, for some people, because there's another way you could deliver this. And that would be, um, you know, in that Adobe connect style where you're kind of running a virtual classroom and that would go very well for you as well, I think. Um, but in, in terms of a video course, you need to bring energy um, to the presentation. So and this is something I look for. So you take Udemy, for example, where you make a course uh, for Udemy and part of the thing they're looking for is um, good video. So, and I'll tell you a bit more about that. They have um, basically the whole, when you're doing a, a presentation like this, it's got to fill the whole screen it's got to be like you're looking at something on a TV and someone's running through a, a documentary or, or work, you know, you might've seen training videos in the place, uh, training videos at work, for example, and you know, yeah. it'll be yeah, very polished. So that's what they're looking for. Um, good audio. So you might hear tonight, my audio is sounding a bit better than it was the other day when um, I, I recorded that short piece that I, I shared over Facebook. And that's because I'm actually using a, a blue snowball, which is a, a podcasting mic. Yeah. And that'll get the sound quality uh, up there. So uh, the reason why I wanted you to go through this is to yeah, pick out whether or not you could do it all in one hit because it will save you a ton of time. You're a teaching pro, so that's not a worry. Um, you'll, you'll get sick of, doing this if you a stop start and then you have to go and edit a lot because one of the the things that holds true is that um for every minute of what you're 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 doing so if it's a 30 minute lesson if you're if you're recording that the editing time is is usually two to four times longer wow yeah so if you if it's an hour you're booking out four hours for the whole thing. Um, you get, yeah. quick, you'll get quicker at it. You'll have your own style. And uh, what I found is you don't want to disappear down the rabbit hole too much. Um, no, I've done that trying to do presentations and introducing things. And I yeah. did about 40 takes cause I've written a whole program yep. and I've been waiting to see something like this uh, because I haven't had any feedback except I just videoed it on my phone. Yep. But I didn't know how to video my screen and, um, you know, how to talk to it or anything. I didn't know anything. Yep. So what I was looking at doing is just videoing me doing my traditional stand and deliver. So I've got this whiteboard here, which yep. could be useful, but I've got to turn it around. I've got to do a flip because it turns everything 180 degrees. Yeah, right. I guess that's right. Um, when I write. So, I mean... I've researched it a bit. Um, there's, there's other ways to do it. Like I could use um, like a glass board or a light board, you know, like you've seen the light boards. Yep. And um, I actually started building a frame. I had the glass and everything, but I just went, nah, it's too hard, too heavy, too cumbersome. But I've yep. got a nice big desk. I could still do it and be talking over my desk like this and writing and the people could see as I'm writing points, there's some really good lectures on the light boards. Yeah. yeah. So uh, I might still do that. I don't know. The, yeah. The other way I've, I've seen it done is where, so just say you're, you're delivering a, a, a part of the course where you, you might be five points, you know, five points you've got to consider when, um, uh, when you're creating a, a nonfiction story or a journalistic piece. And so you're going down the five, right? So, um, you would you'd be able to overlay bullet points um, across the 
the screen with you talking and you could film that anywhere. You could be in your backyard, you could be down the beach or whatever. Wow. And then when you come in to edit it, that's where you, you put these, oh, little, these little pieces. That would be yeah. ideal. Yep. Um, the other thing is I, I got onto this website called story blocks and you can find music. Sometimes it can be good to have a, a, a little bit of music as, as you're, you're, you're entering um, a site. So it's the like video. A theme. Yeah. A tiny, a tiny little bit. Yeah. Um, and, and I, I went and got this little thing called a lower thirds, which pops in and then goes out. And, and that, that can be good for, uh, for summing things up. Uh, if you get, if you decide to get Mavavi, um, they, they have a lot of stuff on board already. And the, awesome. the, good, that good. The, the good thing, so you'll be able to put the text and, and everything like, well, like I've that. been looking at um, some, I've been looking at some, um, some webcasts or, you know, uh, tutorials. I, I've subscribed to a group called Ultimate Impact. Yep. Jim Richards. Have you heard of Jim Richards? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've heard of him. Dr. Jim Richards. Yeah. He, he has a Facebook group and he does the backgrounds like you've got. And he's mostly a talking head, but he gets someone else in and he's talking to them like we are. And they're discussing what's going on at the moment and referring to what they've learned and to other people and they've got like a live feed people are asking questions i mean that would be and they're doing it on facebook so it's quite interesting how they're doing it. i don't know if you've seen it you wouldn't be in a group like that would you by any chance the closest thing uh look look i've seen those sorts of things before um i actually did one through there's this place called the life coaching institute and they did the same thing. It was, um, they had a lot of live TV gear and they had like a techie to set it all up. It can be done. It can yeah, be I'm done. not. Yeah, yeah, he was saying that it did take a lot to set up and they were waiting for the feed and they were making sure everything was working. But they've been doing it for months, mate. And yeah. the presentation is quite good. But being a teacher, like you probably noticed, you've got to be very intentional. Yes, absolutely. And your audience is like 30 students or so and it's you hard can't, you, you kind of feed off off them a little bit I, I i know i know that as well um i i did have some teacher training i i was going to become a high school teacher teaching um uh, economics business and re oh, okay um, yeah so look i'm not all the way there i'm not all i'm not all the way there yet but i have had practical teaching experience so i I do know how different it is being in front of uh, like a group, you know, teaching something and you are kind of sensing their feedback and whether or not they're understanding stuff and yeah, and that kind of thing. Um, I like those yeah. points where you had, uh, you know, tasks. Yes. So they would, they would, they'd go and do a task and then come back for, yeah, you can't stop. You got to go through it, and then send. I'd send them the the PowerPoint. They'd have to fill it in. Yeah. So so in an in an online course, a lot of the platforms um, uh, allow you to have files associated with 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 each section of their course. So so you, you'd say you'd you'd finish one video saying, and you know, and remember, um, look at the PDF that's coming up in the next lesson fill that out and I'll see you in the next video. So you, you do, you would do something like that in a more live video environment um, via Adobe connect or, or like that situation you spoke about with um, Jim Richards. Um, you know, that, that would be, that would be different. That would be different. You'd have then have a moment where, you know, people could go away, but I've yeah, just, they're I just noticed. Sending, they're yeah. just sending the uh, course material to fill in each week like homework. Yeah. 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 So, uh, I've, I've done a little bit of, bit of study online and I've had, um, I, I've been to Adobe, Adobe connect classrooms and I've got to oh, say yeah. it is, it is 
not too far different from the tutorials you'd have in a regular university. Um, right. It, it does have that kind of intimate feel and, and you might have 14 or 15 people, uh, but you can ask questions and there is a possibility where, you know how in a classroom you might have a task where you, you, you put them into groups and they go away and work on something and can't yeah. come back. You can, you can do that with those sorts of things as well. And I noticed even Zoom has, um, they call them breakout rooms. So you you would say at one point, okay, we're going to head out into our breakout rooms now and you're going to work on this material and we'll come back and we'll share. So, so you can do that as well. Uh, but look, I, I think um, like kicking off with video courses, you're going to do well. The only, the only thing you'll, you'll need to learn is Mavavi, which is probably also the easiest to learn of, of all the other um, okay. video editing software. You, you'll, you'll be fine. You'll save a heap of time because you can go straight through something and you've, you, you do come across with passion and energy. Uh, so that, that, that will be, that'll be fantastic. Oh, thanks man. Um, yeah. yeah. I'll tell you where, where I, where I'm headed and, um, I'm quite interested in um, in the storytelling and theatre and drama, that sort of thing. And I started a group called Crash Test Drama. And yep. it's basically storytelling. I'm going to move into Crash Test Stand Up um, and, um, uh, you know, which would be more like storytelling because a compelling story is stand up comedy, basically. Um, so, yeah, if you're interested, what I've done is I, I actually got asked after our first event, which was after Ignite on the 15th of March. I just got in before the COVID-19 thing happened. Yeah. But we had an event where we had 25 people along. It worked, went, went off really well. I had uh, five, six, about six or seven writers sent in work and we, um, we workshopped four of them. Oh, amazing. And I've got the video, I've got the video live of what they did. And some of them were professional actors and some of them are, uh, some of them were Christian came along, a couple of Christian guys came along and it went off really well. Yeah. So if you wanted to crash test some of your work, um, it would uh, be read by people who are throwing themselves into it. The, the format is that people get uh, prizes for the, for the best on the night audience, uh, you know, uh, uh, popular choice and then you have a judge's choice we have best yep. actor, best writer best director and yeah I think it went off really well and it, traditionally it's been going for 12 years in Sydney it's one of a kind but um, the, the uh, ticket money goes towards the prizes so it's really for me the only payoff is I think back end and it's already happened I've already had uh, one job I've got for September running a drama class and then I've also got referrals to uh, um, a, um, a grant. I've just applied for a grant for two and a half thousand. And I built into awesome. that grant to get, uh, I think I'll get it, but I'll see. But um, yeah, it's just a format that will work. I know it works and people were really stoked about it. And I got a lot of uh, interest online. But um, yeah, I built into it that I'll get some training. So I think I'll go to you being a freelancer. Yep. And um, I think I'll put in 600 bucks, 700 bucks for training. So okay. yeah, I'd, I, would, I would like to use what, what format you're doing. And you know, you sound like the sort of thing I'd need anyway. And because you're a writer, you understand um, you know, the complexities of delivery. Yeah, uh, for sure. I mean, you know, sometimes yeah, you know, I'll, I'll be editing, editing stuff. You know, seventy or so times to make sure it's right. So that's that's the complexity. Other times I can get it out all on all on one hit. And I don't know where it comes from, <laughs> but that's so one of the, the choices. Well, for a lot of my clients, because I have done um, my freelance journalism has really been for for business. <laughs> And I I do a bit of a little bit of stuff here and there for for the church, um, and I've also what church you got? oh New, New Vine Lakes, 
So for example, I, I've been helping um, their depression and hope group. Oh yes. They've got, they've got a web, uh, web presence and I've, I just started, I just started helping them. Um, oh, so good there's, on you. there's more to go with that. And uh, I've done some stuff on health and fitness and that kind of thing in the past as well. Um, and I've done e- eBooks, but mostly it's blog and article writing. Um, I, I, I write eBooks myself and, and sell them. Yeah. Um, so, so, so there's that as well, but, um, yeah, I, it's, I'm, I'm a little bit low, low key. Um, I do copy editing as well. So for example, if someone's got a website, I can go on there and, and help jazz it up a little bit. Um, yeah, help, help them plan out the website to make it effective. Yeah, that's what I'm doing. I've, um, but I haven't got much skill in that area. I'm more like copywriter and being able to deliver lessons. I haven't done the technical presentation. Like at the moment, I'm just doing casual teaching. So I just show up, I get given a lesson on the day, like Mission yeah. Impossible. If you will choose to do this, <laughs> yes. this is what you've got to do. You know, I've got year 12, year 11, you know, sport, um, art and um, bus duty, you know, so it's all pretty much laid out for me. I go home and I forget it. So yeah. it's good that way. But yeah. I would like to have an online thing because I've done so many lessons in my life and I was taught the new HSC last year. I hated Tari. It, it was really, I didn't like it up there. So I've come home again and I'm just enjoying being back with people I know and and doing some things I like. Yeah. And um, yeah, crash test drama has been a real blessing. Um, I'm also in a performance in Sydney we're doing, which has been put off for a while, but it's called short and sweet, which is, there's a festival. If you're a writer, the way that you develop your work, if you get through the crash test finals, then you get into short and sweet. Yep. I I have seen um, a lot a pathway where a lot of people who are doing, Nonfiction journalism, freelance journalism, that kind of thing, end up becoming becoming fiction writers. Um, oh, right. There's a few people who were journalists at the Sydney Morning Herald, for example. And I mention them because I work for them, not not in the capacity of a freelance writer, but um, in, in in advertising. But yeah. you get to you get to know the characters, and um, and some of them transition from from nonfiction journalism, and and actually longer journalism works. I love that too. I'd love to do more of that. Um, what investigative stuff? Yeah. Like take a subject and then, and, 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 and treat it, treat it like a, you know, long form journalistic piece. Um, the one that comes to mind is a, a book called, um, why the, why the world is flat. And it was written by an economist and he was talking about globalization, but he, 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 he told it in a story and it was just, just wonderful. I, I like docos and, and that kind of stuff. But um, I think having the, the skill to be able to tell a story helps for a start. And I think down the track, being able to transition uh, to, to doing, doing fiction writing, uh, would it's going to expand, sure. your, expand your horizon. And I think, I mean, in this little bit that you've shared with me tonight, you, you've, you've got before you um, a wonderful opportunity. So you'll be able to create a courses, deliver them. Mm. You're a professional teacher. It comes across in, in what you, you do and you deliver value to people. So there's, there's teaching platforms like Udemy and Skillshare. That's one area you might want to look at okay. now. Um, once you get your, your software set up, and and that kind of thing. Um, now, yeah. after after that, you may want to develop your own presence and brand, and you can do that. There's two sites that will help you establish your own online school, which is branded <laughs> by you. It's your your brand, whatever that is, and they are teachable. And thinkific, and you can you can 
basically create your own online platform and school. Um, right. So the, there's a there's a, a guy I bought a lot of his stuff on Udemy, and then he he built his own school called Video School Online, and he's using uh, Teachable. Uh, it, it's it they you can set up everything yourself. You don't have to be really techy. Um, right. Uh, and I I haven't done it yet because I don't want to head down that path just yeah. yet. Um, as somebody who's doing creating courses for for business people, Udemy is the marketplace that I I would like to be on. Uh, but. You know, when when I'm a, a few years down the track and I've got more of a branding behind me, um, then yeah, I might want to consider an online business school. But right now, it's not not for me. But for you, you've got a whole lot of material across many different subject areas. And I have. I've got heat. Yeah, and I think you'd you'd really be able to uh, to, to do something. Yeah. So look, yeah, I've got um, to say, I'm just thinking about. Um... Yeah, go on. Yeah, yeah, go on. Um... I, I was just thinking about like, um, you know, success is about preparing properly and and um, not jumping in and saying, oh, I wish I would have waited for this platform. But you've given me a good overview, and I think Moabi. But why couldn't um, something like Zoom do what we're doing, recording the page? and having other people online doing it live and then recording it and then selling yep. it out to anyone who missed it. Many yeah. people do that. That's another reason I thought we'd do this because if you head to some of these, these platforms, um, some of them are doing courses where they're having a chat There's professional people who are talking about a subject and they're yes. offering their, uh, opinions and putting their points forward. Yeah, masterclass. Yeah, that's an example. Yeah, some what of the Udemy, masterclass. Some of the They're Udemy all over courses, Facebook, aren't they? Yeah, some of the Udemy courses that I've done is is um, uh, just like that. You go in you there. Know what? I yeah. got onto um, the Harvard, which is uh, something edX or something they call it, like the Harvard University, and they had yeah. Shakespeare, and I thought, oh, I've done some Shakespeare. I want to see what it's like. And it was really lame. Yes, I, I think, because uh, I have done some stuff through edX and I find that they are, it's like a short promotional course to lead you into a bigger one. That's right. So That's all it's, it is. It's kind of lead generation at some point. Um, yeah, I, I did one through through Newcastle just recently. Um, oh, it, it, I mean, it they don't give you anything for free, but if they did something for free and you're looking for something else, then you'd go to them and say, oh, I've used you before, I'll, I'll pay up. Yeah, so, well, like, well, well they, they, they make their money because they'll say, look, and, and they do pay instructors there as well, but it's not as easy as just like you do with Udemy, jumping on Udemy and going to the instructors section of it and starting to set yourself up. Um, it's, it's that easy. Same with Skillshare. It's that easy as well. Um, but and so you're you, what what are you using? I use um, I use Udemy and Skillshare, and um, I get a I get payment from them. I also write on I, I write in the Medium platform. Um, I haven't haven't been doing a lot. What of platform? Medium. It's like it's it's like an independent Sydney Morning Herald or that right. kind of thing. Some of it's more opinion, uh, but, and you've, you've got a lot of people who are obviously trying to get followers. Well, that's the main reason behind it. Um, it's really good. I don't mind reading some of the stuff. Um, and you get, you get paid per view. So somebody, you'll write a piece for them and, and people, people vote. They give you a, they vote for you and uh, with hand claps and, and that goes that that goes into um, how they figure out how they're going to pay you. So X number of hand claps gives you so much money. So there are people oh. who are making um, a very comfortable living on on Medium. Um, I wouldn't I wouldn't put all my 
eggs into that. So I, I do a few different things. Um, so what are some of the topics you've done? Uh, so some of the, to I've actually d done stuff on, on blog writing um, and S SEO. So I've done some articles on, on that, um, uh, writing in general. And I've done, I've done some other things on more businessy type stuff like um, investing in, and, and real estate and, and that kind of thing. Ah, so people are looking at it now, especially because of the business downturn, they're going to be gearing up on the internet, onto yeah. remote, remote platforms. I've done a few things. I've worked myself pretty hard doing um, like house renos. I've done three renos, one in the States and two here. And really? they all made, yeah, they all made money, but, it's sort of with four children, it gets eaten up. Yeah. So I'm not like, I'm not sitting on a nest egg, put it that way. Yeah. But um, I can get $450 a day just teaching, mate. Oh, well, look, you know, uh, and, and in your spare time, um, create, create courses and, and load them up. Yeah. Like yeah, but there's, there's, a, there's a, a, a guy called Jerry Banfield and he, he, he set out with, with the goal that he would create um, a video a day, a video a day. And, and then that obviously over time gets loaded up in all these courses, which gets released. He had 60 courses and he made, he made a million dollars and he, wow. he was, he was not doing an eight hour day. Um, I, I would, I wouldn't do things his way and I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't do that. Um, I, I think it's, it's, Qualities are a much better ideal than quantity. Yeah, you got to live with it. What, yeah, whatever you do, whatever you put out there, you got to live with it the rest of your life. That's what yeah. I think. You've you've already got resources. You've already got material. So you you are um, a heck of a lot further down the the pipeline than someone like myself, who I would re regard as a subject matter expert on business and marketing and that that sort of stuff. So be beyond, beyond, beyond that. Um, I, I probably don't have as much scope as yourself, um, to, to run with it. But you've got the capacity. And so, what, yeah, what so I've done, I don't mind passing on this knowledge and, and having now seen your presentation, um, uh, that, you know, I can, I can say, yeah, look, you've, you've, you've got it all together the software's something you'll you'll pick up and learn it's not that hard you're off and running i spent a fair bit of time getting my um studio set up my background all right yeah that looks cool that was cool okay. i love yeah i <laughs> i did this course once and, and uh someone said oh i love those books i love those books you've got in the background <laughs> they're all kind of business writers and um <laughs> And they've gone, oh, yeah, I love, I love those books. <laughs> Can you see mine? Can you actually read what they are? I, I can't actually, no. I've got it. Probably if I put the light up there, you'd be able to see. But anyway, I've got the it's Bible. A little bit yeah, further away, yeah. Yeah, I've got um, Sean Boltz. I've been reading lately. Um, John G. Lake, Your Power and the Holy Spirit. And then I've got a bunch of other, you know, videos, you know, Seinfeld and a and bunch of uh, Christian stories and things. But anyway, yeah, I just, I, I put a bit of time in to make it all nice, but I could probably improve a little bit more. It's got a big, this is just my shed. So the back of this is just, through there is just some, um, some uh, weatherboard or asbestos or something. So I probably need to improve it. But anyway, no. if it's all right, it's all right. But yeah, yeah look, got, oh, yeah, it's fine. I got my board set up so I can. But I, I noticed that you're in a very strong still position. You know, I tell people when I'm acting or directing, you know, still is strong. So you've got a very good. Um, way of presenting and your voice is very is um is just very clear and neutral and and um 
and firm. So it's good. It's very you got a lot of clarity. I was looking at this is another thing I put in the submission in my grant, uh, the Roadmaster Pro, which is like a podcasting. Oh, um, yes, I know what that is because I want one myself. I want one. Yeah, I know. Be I applied for it. They, they're giving them to high state high schools. But a Roadmaster Pro would be good um, because yep. I, got I, got, I got invited to be the artistic director for a, a podcasting company called um, Short Play Podcasts. Oh, wow. And they just started up. They came, the guy came to um, the Crash Test drama and he's a guy who works for Maritime and he's a writer as well. And um, he's set up like he's semi-retired and he's put out... Um, He's got a, a, a website and, uh, yeah, short play podcasts. I might send you the link, but he's already got a few people that have, um, that have submitted stories about uh, their experience during the COVID virus pandemic. And he's looking for stories on uh, Anzac Day and what life will be like at Christmas. So, yeah, he's sort of got it set up and... I was due to see him tomorrow, but he said, oh, look, in the environment, it's only supposed to be essential travel. And I don't know what, I didn't, I just said, look, I just respect your opinion, your decision, because um, I wanted to um, do a podcast, but my audio is not great. I've only got a little, I've got a little radio mic here, a little directional mic, sorry. All I've got is this a little directional mic. Yep. And I'd rather have like what, you know, that pod thing that you had. Yep. Or he's got a, one, a Roadmaster something else that just sticks oh, into yeah. the USB. Yeah. Look, look the, the snowball is probably at the bottom end, but look, I, I do some podcasting myself and I've, I, I have helped one or two people set up theirs um and yeah the snowball is where you you'd, you'd start off from but it's another one of those, there's another yeah, one of those rabbit holes you can jump down as um being overall with tech but look i tell you what if you get the roadmaster pro it makes things like doing interviews and that kind of thing a bit easier yeah yeah what what do you think of someone like joe rogan who's, you know, the top podcaster in the world. And all he does is just create a little studio, a comfortable pay, place, and, and has like a Roadmaster, a couple of mics, and that's all. And then he videos it. I mean, how easy is that? Oh, absolutely. And it's the content that, that really matters with a, a podcast. Um, I will suffer um, a little bit of sound quality problems if the content is solid gold. Um, you know, some echo in the room or that kind of stuff. That's fine. Um, but yeah, I mean, if you've got good content, then then you're set. And you, you can upgrade over time, you know. Um, I, I use this thing. I'm trying to think of the name of it now. What well, you upload your file once you've done your audio and it does all the leveling for you and improves the, oh, yeah. uh, the, the sound quality. I'll send you a I'll send you a link to it because um, th that would help. Um, sometimes in in video where the sound hasn't been all that great, I will cut the audio out and I'll take it and put it through Audacity and audio editing program I've got. That's free. Yeah, and then I'll I'll polish it up and then I'll I'll bring it back into the uh, the video, um, and that that can sometimes help. Um, but yeah, once again, you don't want to go too far down the rabbit hole. And well, wow, so you work I, from home, Matt. Uh, look, I don't. Most of my hours now are with are with an employer. Um, my mate, actually, I work for my mate, who's who, who's um, is mobility hire and sales, and he he does scooters and um, disability equipment, and he services hospitals. So most of my hours. Uh, with that and i do now I do the creative stuff uh, i'd say about between five and ten hours a week i do do for that um but it's something i don't want to lose and i want to maintain i want to stay in it 
uh, be because it, it's and I've helped my I've helped him as well. Like I wrote, he had to do um, an audit for the NDIS, and I yes. helped create all of the technical business documents for that. So we're talking about. Um, checklists, we're talking about policies and procedure manuals, all of that stuff I got done for him. There was about 40 documents in the end. And and he actually then was able to be certified rather than just re registered. And he's one of the only ones on the Central Coast who's been able to do it. So um, I, I was able to use my... So does, he make, does he make the equipment and you help him make it or what? No, no, he, he's got his suppliers that bring it in. He's, he's basically a, a retailer, but uh, his, yeah. his connection point is with aid service providers and, yeah. and the, the NDIS. So people who need crutches, mobility scooters, um, hoists, for example, hospital beds. That's another, another one he does. So most of my hours now are with him. It's really satisfying work too. You get to help somebody who... You know they don't get a lot of help from from people, and as to to see that they get the equipment they need and their life is a bit more comfortable is, you know, is very satisfying. Well, that sounds all right. So you're driving yeah. around, helping deliver to people. You're connecting I, with people. Yeah, I drive. I, I help in the shop with selling. Um, I help uh, with a with accounting and some kind of operational management stuff, but um, yeah, m mostly I'm a kind of a jack of all trades and that's what he needs. He's a, he's a small to medium sized business and he's transitioning from really a business that's small into one that's medium sized and his complexities are around uh, building the organization up to that level to cope with higher output, but also all the other stuff that goes around that. So site selection oh, yeah. logistics staffing training it's yeah it's it's huge which is why a lot of people a lot of people a lot of people in his particular um situation decide to sell out or sell you know sell out somebody they've built the business up they can't really take it any further and they they'll sell out but um he, he loves what he does so he wants to grow that a little bit more Well, my internet connection is unstable. Well, um, look, I want to thank you very much, and yeah. thank you. I'm too. not sure where to go from here, but I would, you know, I would say um, so the next step for you, um, if you get the Mavavi software or Camtasia, that would be the that would be the next step for you, and start having a play with uh, making some videos, um, and, and oh yeah. I didn't turn the light on. Tell me if this is any better, if you don't mind. Yeah. Let me show you one more thing. I forgot to turn the main light on. It may create more. I don't know if it creates any reflection, but is that is that better? There's this horrible reflection here, isn't there? Oh, uh, off, off. But is that? It's not. Look, it's yeah. not. It's not too distracting. Um, but I, I th your lighting is way better than mine because it's, it's, um, it looks like it's more in, in front of you. Mine is a little bit behind me and I'm getting some glare off the, the computer. So yeah, it wouldn't be any good for me to do, um, like a talking head video here. I'd probably take my phone out the backyard and, and I'd, I'd, I'd do a, a talking head there and explain some stuff and then come back to uh, to you know like a screen flow sharing a presentation that's that's what i'd what i'd do um but yeah if you've got your you've got a good setup there and um you could you could get a you can get these things called a um a, a green screen um they're on amazon actually it's like a little uh, fold out screen yeah and you could you could put it behind you, and oh, where the blackboard is. Yeah, Mavavi has this thing called um, Chroma Screen, and so what they what it that what it allows you to do is um, the Chroma Screen. You could put anything 
uh, in that green screen behind you. So, which is really cool because you could take a video of yourself talking head style in front of the green screen. And then in editing, uh, you, you could also then put on the background um, a, a screen flow presentation. So you're delivering this presentation and the points are you know, up beside you or, 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 you know, one side or above you or, or whatever. And they look really cool. Uh, you, 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 could, you could definitely do that. You have good lighting there. Um, and so that, that's not going to be a problem for doing that solar video. And I would, I would recommend that solar video because uh, it's good engagement. People taking a course online will then uh, get to see who their, their instructor is. I think that's, that's really, really good. Um, I do a talking head at the start and I, my, my videos run through material and I might do a talking head. At, at the end of it, to wrap things up, uh, but I I don't have those points of engagement in the middle that you would have the opportunity or potential to do. Yeah, well, I'd have to get my head around the logistics, but I like to look at some of your videos. So, how would I find you? Yeah, okay. Um, I will send you a. I'll I'll send you a a link from from one of my. Udemy courses, um, and yeah, and 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 you I, and that you'll you'll get a bit of a feel for number one what the video format looks like, and then also um, how the, the the process of the the course goes. Um, yeah, it's very easy though being a, a a pro teacher and having done, you know, uh, teaching and learning programs and, and lesson plans. Yeah, that's going to be a snack for you. Okay, so what I think I might do is do a business plan. Yep. And then from there, I could possibly write in these things into the cost and the projections. And I mean, I've wanted to do some tutoring from home, but if I'm producing some videos, people could pay for the content afterwards. I was just expecting to get students in here and talk to them personally and tutor one-on-one. -on -one. Yep. But what I might, you've sort of shifted me into thinking I could perhaps video some of these and um, present some as free because I could put some of my work on various sites and sell it. But a lot of teachers do that on things like TES, like Teachers Education Resources. Yep. And, um, you know, various other sites. You can buy the material. But I think. I didn't want to give it away sort of thing. So I don't, but if I had some clients that wanted some things to sell, I'd probably have to think this through a bit, whether I, you know, cause like I'd need to then send out the material. It's one thing to do a lecture and present this. I'd have to work out how, you know, send this, this slideshow out and then the students send it back, complete it. And then they do their material and send it back and I mark it. But the good thing is I've got myself an iPad. And now, as you know, you know, for marking, it's quite easy. I've got this pen. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. So I don't have to, you know, do a hard copy. I can just mark it up and say, extend here, develop this, what about that? And then electronically send it back and to and fro. Ah, oh, brilliant. That, so, that's, that's really clever. So it would replace the traditional teaching and getting students literacy up. And I devised a program that's got 52 topics, you know, one for each day of the year. And with each one, I've, I've written stories and, um, or I've written uh, descriptions, stories, essays for those 52 topics from adventure right through to world events. Yep. So yeah, I, I was thinking of giving it out or doing a sampler for people and they and then for that I've got a matrix of 50 um, the 50 topics and what they are and then the students write one so my idea is that they would write one on each topic one text like whether it's an instructional or you know whether it's discourse 
of different kind or a, or a traditional essay or a short story yep. or a play, whatever, whatever form they want to use, but they write something on each topic and it's got mathematics, it's got science, it's got everything. So that's my education program I've worked on for three years. I've been looking for a way to, to, to um, transmit it so that it's yep. not just, you know, um, I use it occasionally in the classroom. I've tested it out. And it's vocabulary based as well as like what we did there. Yep. It's got the elements of that in it. So anyway, I'm, I'm just wanting to present that, put that out there. So I've got that ready to go, but it's not necessarily a slideshow, but I have got a slideshow explaining it. But the idea is the kids get the matrix. I think I've got one somewhere. The kids get a matrix. Yeah. Just like a spreadsheet of all the topics and they're supposed to do one a week. And then by the end of 52 weeks, they've got a folio. And my, my reasoning is that in industrial arts, you get, you know, a magazine rack and a pencil case. Yep. And in, in cooking, you learn to do brownies and scones and lasagna. And in art, you get a folio of art. But in English, we walk away going, oh, I hate English. I've got this essay I had to do from a teacher. I'm going to chuck it, you know. But what I want to do for people, you probably appreciate this being a writer is for everyone to have their own folio of the best work. Yeah. And they carry it through for their life. Yep. Yeah. I, I use, I use um, a platform called contently where I link a lot of my work from. Um, so it's con contently and then, and then my, my name and um, it yeah. links, it links a lot of, a lot of the work that I've done. Um, I can't, you can upload PDFs and that kind of thing there as, as well. But that was just simply to, to have a folio, yeah, of, of, of my creative work. And it is all creative. Um, oh, that's interesting. So you've done yeah. like a lot of fiction, short stories. No, no, no. It's, it's all, it's, poem. It's, it's really just uh, most of all my articles and some of the some of the, the PDFs and eBooks that I've, I've made, I've made for people. Oh, um, good on you. It doesn't have a lot of my, my video simply because a lot of that's, um, you know, on, on Udemy paid for platforms and that sort of thing. And it's, um, it, it doesn't have all of the stuff on medium that I, I do. Um, so it needs a bit of updating, uh, but, yeah, I've, I've, I've got, oh, it would be about 60, 60 things that I've, I've linked to. So there's a definite theme and that is um, freelance, uh, freelance business journalism. That would be the theme if there was one. Um, right. and, uh, on, and if you added in the, the video that I do, it would be you know, online course creation and, and that kind of thing. Online course creation. So is that what you're doing with me now? Well, you would actually, you would, this is a little bit of a coaching session, really. Um, yeah, it is. That's, that's what, that's what this is. But yeah, that's right. That's what you're going to be doing a little bit of this. So you, the content that you've already prepared, you'll be able to derive some, some income for it. You've put um, yeah, a lot of effort into building the presentations uh, content is solid gold. You've got a lot of it and you should be able to get some, something from it. And I've recorded this. Um, so I'll share that Obviously, with you. Mojave? Yeah. Not on Mojave. I have recorded it through zoom. I, I could put it through uh, Mojave after this. Um, and there's the possibility of content repurposing. So once you've made a video, uh, you could then um, take out the audio and you could have that transcribed and you could turn that into something like an ebook or a book. Oh. There's a few Christian, there's a Christian writer who does something very similar. And he's got about 50 books on, on, on Amazon. They're real cheap. So a lot of people buy them. They're short and they're, they're sweet, but he's a guy who does this content repurposing where he, he, he might, he might've given a lecture or talk somewhere. He records it. He uploads the audio, has it transcribed. 
and then edits the book really thoroughly and changes it so it you know it looks like a book um so that's something you can explore as well so what uh, you're doing for a teacher there's hundreds of teachers out there mate like me who haven't got like the training there's a few very, very few people but i found in the system what tends to happen people hold things very close to their chest if they've got a skill they think it's mine it's mine yeah i understand yeah and um they do a golem with it you know they do a golem and they uh they hoard it and they don't want to share it with anyone but um you'll find I'm, I'm, online teachers are the complete opposite they they will want to share as much as they they can um a lot of them a lot of them create stuff for uh, for free that leads into some of their paid stuff but they're getting something for it you know like um one guy i've yeah. taken a lot of his courses he's a very very good on, online uh, video course instructor he has about 65 courses on on udemy i don't have all of them but he makes he makes over a million dollars a year wow and what is it what's his topic what are his topics about his his name is phil ebner um and so the courses that i've i've done are around writing and around making video and that kind of thing um and he does photography and he 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 um he delves into things like after effects which is going down a rabbit hole but it's um creating a lot of those teaser things that you see in videos the things that make it look next level professional um it's not something i want to get a, a whole lot into so i haven't taken those courses but i have taken some things on how to do a, um, a wordpress website i've learned a lot of these skills that that that, yeah. that i can i can do i you know i, I use them um yeah i've and i've learned on youtube i've learned for free how to how to do websites and how to code and css it's like i never knew how to do that and then i came up against the problem where i had one website that had a template that i i got and it was locked into a, a certain color and it's like oh, i don't want that what do i do about this so i had to manually learn how to code and css and go and make a hard change to the color on that website so i learned how to do that it's uh, like a little programming language and i could do yeah. a little bit in html so and i use that when i'm doing some website copy to make the page look a bit better um so i might add some bold or italic or a certain type of heading and that's done for seo purposes as, as well um and also to make a blog stand out if you're writing an article it helps to have a to break up the text with a little bit of, you know, doing something to the text. And uh, people often just scan uh, a text. So they might have an article and they, they'll just scan it first before they dive right in. So if, yes. if, you, if you know how to um, make some of this text pop a little bit, then uh, that's where HTML skills can, can come in handy. Uh, it can be a bit of a rabbit hole. So I only, I only learn what I need. Yeah, I, yeah, I can get interested. I did do one of the internet um, lessons on building a website, and I did it for my business called Teacher Tutors. And I've still got the bank account. I got about four students, but then the platform let me down, you know, and I just chucked it. I went, no, nah, I'll just go back to work. So this yeah. was about two years ago, but you've got me interested again. And because of this coronavirus, I talked to my school today and I said, oh, if there's any courses running at the school or if you need me for any work, let me know. And I got a, um, I got a text back, no, sorry, there's nothing at the moment. So they're all bunkered down, putting their heads together, saying, how are we going to run this? Because everyone's got to be on the same page. Yeah. I'm very lucky. I'm at a good school. Like, so I'm lucky. I've just got to wait my turn. Yeah. And casual teachers at the bottom of the list, so I've got no work. Except yeah. a bit of lawn with a local real estate agent. So but the University of New England has a, a short post grad course on um, online teaching and learning. And yeah. I, I'd like to I'd like to take it. Only you need to have a couple of years 
teaching experience before they they give it to you or online, yeah. online teaching and learning but it's really about it's the nuts and bolts of of this sort of sort of process so of what you're talking about yep what goes on by behind the scenes um they want they they are encouraging teachers to do it because they want teachers to be able to teach online as well um, so what's the cost uh it's 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 like a like a it's a postgrad certificate so it's about four grand and do you have to pay for it up front i think you can defer using help what's that what's help uh the higher education loan program and so just okay. like just like the higher education contribution scheme um you 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 pay it back uh with your tax so you earn over a certain income and then you're making installments oh i should do that i reckon honestly um it will definitely position you like within the teaching system it'll position you as somebody who has you know some standout skills but you know in the meantime you know um running with teaching via video courses and and this sort of thing i think is definitely going to help you you've got resources well this, is, well this is just sit and deliver really it's not yeah. stand and just that's sit and deliver. right exactly so what i could do is just duplicate what i did tonight just make some more like i did make a couple more of uh powerpoints but i thought i'd go with that one that i showed you so will i just go with that is that what you're saying yeah, yeah, I reckon. I reckon. Get uh, grab this. The, the, the thing was all right. The, Everything's yeah, look, all right. Feel like this. Yeah, look, your lighting's good. Um, where if you're doing a if if, if you're doing a, a talking head, yeah, your your lighting is 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 uh, is good. Um, Should I be closer up or anything, or that's just the way? No, it is. that's 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 fine. How you? How you, how you doing and just do the screen. So I'm going to appear just like I am now. Yep. So if, if you're using the, in. if you're using the, the rule of thirds, if you've heard that in photography, the, the rule yes. of thirds, you're, you're yeah. in basically a one third of the screen. And that actually does look a lot better than being say okay. in the middle of the screen. If you, if yeah. you're over here uh, in a third um, that, yeah, that's good. Okay, well, and then I just use, like you said, the Zoom. And, um, but if I'm going to create um, like Zoom videos, can I record them or do yeah, I Yeah, you to... can. This is how I came to record that short thing that I did the, the other day is I was doing, I was in a Zoom session with somebody and they left and I was just having a poke around. I'm like, hmm, let me see, well, could I possibly create a video using zoom without anybody else do i need to have anyone else here with me so i had a go um and i'm like okay well yeah you can you, you can do this the image uh was not fan fantastic that's the difference that you'll have it looked cool you had that little thing pulling across the screen and yes i when i I got the zoom video and then I edited it in, in Mavavi. I went and got a, a lower third and I, I popped that in there and I put the text of the, the Bible passages and I put them yeah, in cool. at, at just the point in time that I'd started talking about them. And hey, no, that, that looks yeah. really pro and what, what you ought to do, cause you've got to brand yourself a certain way and it looked like you're on Starship Enterprise. <laughs> it's in a bit, it's and in you a bit. said this is me looking at the world and it, it was funny but it was the voice of god this is <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's right it was a li look a little tiny little bit of humor and i'm sometimes i don't know whether i missed the mark or not but I, it was no, a little good. bit of yeah as a little bit of that's why i commented on it i said oh that's why i commented i said oh any chance of you telling me how you do that yeah <laughs> Not a worry, yeah. So you, when you're having a, a play around with Zoom, you, there's some settings and you go into the settings and they have these virtual backgrounds. And, and so you'll be able to, to select one, but 
Um, if you're branding yourself, you might want to go and have a, a logo made up on Fiverr or, or you might want to get a pretty picture or, or, or something. Um, I've got a logo. I've got all my stuff set up and a business plan and everything. Yeah, you could I've, you could pop that in the it. in the background as a as a as a virtual background and it would it would come up. It's called Teacher Tutors. Teacher, teacher Tutors. Tutor. Teacher Tutors. Teacher because tutor, I I had a um like a a business running a, a tutoring business in Sydney, an agency. And I had a hundred teachers, about 150 students, but it was a logistical nightmare. Teachers are terrible at handing the material in, telling you any information, you know, different class, different, different student, different time, different rate. And there was people calling me all hours of the day and night wanting to change. Oh. And then I had to be the agent and it was just too hard. So um, I just dropped it when I came up here and then, I've wanted to pick it up again because I got sick of the state school system. And then I, I did all the groundwork, built a website, paid for hosting, paid for the business name, paid for the logo, did all that stuff. And I've got it all there. It's in the background, but I just went, no, nah, I'm dropping. It's too hard. Oh, well, so, that's, that's good. You can, you can use that um, as, yeah, as your, as your brand. And, and I've got not, a not a bad, not a bad brand to have either. I've got to say. It's really crap, um, like quality. My website, I'm embarrassed by it. It's just a Wix website, but yeah. I can't. Like, I've got an offer to upgrade it. I get forty percent off, and it's not a lot of money. It's only like one hundred and fifty a year, and I could do that because I think people only go to websites as a reference point now. But I need to have it. But yeah, I'm a bit stuck still. I'm still a bit stuck in the mud, like. That I could, could do a big course and I'll, I'll probably be in the environment where I'll do it, but I'm not in the environment where I'll do it. Yeah. Teaching and I'm running this crash test drama thing. And I'm just at a point where my work's dropped off. I can't go all out for a creative enterprise like that. Yeah. Well, I can, I can, but I need some momentum. Yeah. Yeah. You're better off getting the ducks in a row and, and then, you know, may, maybe doing, you know, still having the creative yeah. outlet, and and that's that's a um a side hustle, a side project that, you know, uh, becomes something else that's a lot bigger down the track. And um, someone like Phil yeah. Ebner, that's exactly how it happened to him. He he had left um, video school. He he went to a university where he learned how to be a videographer, and there wasn't a lot of work around for him when he was only getting. You know, you know, part shifts here and there, so he decided to to fill in some time by doing by doing this and creating courses. He never expected it to go anywhere, and then it it, it it did end up doing it because a lot of people are moving to education and and upskilling online now. So some, yeah. someone like my, myself, um, I don't have the hours to go to a campus and do and and do study. You know the trip there, the trip back, and like if I can do it online, I can still get the educational experience and get the quality and the qualifications and the skill upgrade. Yeah, yeah. Um, and online, it, it just works that much better. Yeah. So what you're saying, the New England course might be online, and then you go up there for a weekend and for your exams and that sort of thing. Uh, that course is it's totally online. You don't have to present it at, at campus at all, um, and it's ta that is targeted at 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 teachers um, who are in yeah, in service yeah. teachers. So uh, they're trying to get teachers to upskill who are already teachers. So they they need to be able to make it easy for them to to do the course. So yeah, I recommend I recommend that. I'll give it a go, and I'll get that snowball thing. So I'm ready to, because the quality of my voice is probably not that good. I probably need to um, use the snowball in my USB. Yeah, and the I've got a MacBook Pro that's working. All right. The quality of your voice is it's it's not too bad. The snowball will bring it up. I also got when I got the snowball, I I bought a a pop filter with it, which stops some issues with plosives and you know those things that our mouth wants to do that we don't want it to do. 
So if you grab a pop filter for that as well, they're only about nine dollars or so in a, in addition. Um, and if you if you end up landing uh, the uh, the the that I'm trying to the Rodecaster Pro, well, yeah, uh, I want to get one of those. That is next level quality. Yeah, you can do a you can do a lot with it. You can use it as a mixing board, and you record you can record straight onto it. Um, so you're you're certainly going to be set for something like podcasting, but also for producing good quality videos with good audio, that'll help you as well. That would be awesome, man. Hey, I don't want to take up any more of your time. I could hear your family in the background. All right. Well, so, yeah, th thank, thank you. So You're definitely off and running with something. So, um, yeah, I want to thank you for, for logging on and uh, t today, and we've run through this. You've, you've definitely got legs with what you're, you're wanting, wanting to do. And it's, it's only going to be a very short learning curve for you. And you'll be able to start producing stuff that will, will make you some money. Thank you so much, Matt. All right, Jeff. Thank you very much for your time. Thanks, brother. Bye.